that might be the issue. I think you should probably wear a little bit more. I'm very aware that I smell like an 80s woman with blue mascara and shoulder pads. I did go to a Steven Spielberg moment in my head just then. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. Hi guys, it's Arch Womano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I didn't do a questions and answers video in July. Uh, I just kind of didn't have much time to do many videos in July, so I'm combining July, August, questions and answers. These are some of the things that you guys asked me over the last two months. Let's begin. The first question comes from Heather Davis, and this was on my smelly male parcels that I received in June. She said, you look amazing in red. Varum. Quick question. Thanks, by the way. <laughs> what fragrance do you wear when you feel blue? Pun intended. What one scent brings you utter joy? So many, Heather. So many fragrances. It's a big reason that I wear fragrance, just period, really, is to feel joy and feel delighted and happy. Uh, but if I had to put it down to maybe one or two, I would say my favourite, which is Samsara. I just, it makes me feel magical and wonderful and amazing. And yeah, I mention it all the time, but when it's your favourite, it's going to come up. There's also one called Amarosa, and it's by Ruth Marstenbrook. And to me, it smells a little bit like the original Pantene conditioner from the 90s. So that one's a kind of nostalgic happiness. It's very clean smelling, um, kind of smells like hair conditioner <laughs> in the best way possible. Uh, and funny story, I've said it before, I, I loved the smell of Pantene conditioner so much when I was a child that I used to just put it in my hair and just leave it in there. People thought I was probably crazy, but I just liked, it was like perfuming my hair with conditioner. I'm a strange person. But yeah, there's so many. Perfume as a whole brings me joy. But those two are the ones that spring to mind right now. The next question is from I Am Gids, and this was on one of my discoveries and disappointments videos. I can't remember which one because I don't put the, didn't do the right thumbnail. Sorry. It says, I think you would have enjoyed Turbulence, Turbulences from LV, Louis Vuitton. A beautiful leathery tuberose scent. Also, what do you think of the Maison Dior line of fragrances? I'm intrigued to know if you've tried them and if so, which ones you liked, disliked or were indifferent to. Thanks for a great video. You are welcome. Hmm. So the Maison Dior line, I guess you mean the, the Privé is, no, they don't call them Privé. They do call them Privé Dior. I, my favorite one, I guess I'm being a bit of a basic bitch, but I really love Fev Delicious. And we already lost one battery. Great start to the video. Fev Delicious, I know it's a favorite of a lot of people, but to me, it's the best Tonka perfume that I've ever tried. I think it's so yummy and just, it's usually, it's quite sweet for what I usually wear, but it's one that I've wanted in my collection for many, many years, and I've almost bought it so many times. I don't know why I haven't. I definitely have a decant of it. Well, I had one. I had two, now I've got one, because I used one. But um, that one's my absolute favorite. I really, really like Ombre Nuit as well. Such a stunning, soft, powdery amber. However, it didn't really go anywhere. It didn't last too long. It's one of those disappointing ones where it's, it smells so amazing, if only it lasted longer. And ones that I'm indifferent to, Holy Peony, one of the new ones, I just thought it was a generic pink sweet thing. And there was one called Lucky as well that I tried. The name drew me to it. I thought, oh, okay. Maybe if I spray it on, I'll have some luck today. But that was, it was a green liquid and it, it didn't smell of anything even memorable. I can't even remember what it smells like. What does that tell you? Also, there's one called, I think it's Grey Mountain, Green Montagne, or Montai, Montagne. Another one that I was really underwhelmed by, again, can't even remember what it smelled like. So, yeah. Those are the Maison, the Privé lines. I guess that's what you meant. If not, sorry, but that's what I took it to mean. So thanks for your question. The next one's from Jamie Akadi. Uh, it was on my Amouage Lyric Woman video and she or he said, any others that smell more like Samsara? I chose to answer this one because a lot of people love Samsara, like me. I've already mentioned it in this video, not even five minutes in. And their 
has been uh, lots of reformulations of samsara and the newest one in the bee bottle is terrible. It smells like samsara but it fast forwards to a basic vanilla in about 10 minutes which is such a shame. I have found two fragrances that smell like samsara. One of them is by Nishan or Nishane don't know how you pronounce their name, and it's called Santa Love. I did see this online for really cheap and I'm kicking myself for not buying it because I had a sample and it was like the vintage samsara to me. It was so powerful and wonderful and I'm still kind of hunting it down, so that one. Another one I smelled recently is by Roger Dove and it's called Danger. I tried the, I don't know what they were called, Elixir line, so I think they were uh, maybe slightly more transparent than his normal line but he does have one called Danger for women and it's very much like Samsara. It's a little bit more floral but it's got so many notes that match Samsara. Sandalwood, Ylang Ylang, Touch of Violet, Vanilla and Jasmine so it feels very much the same so I'm actually gonna go and smell at some point the Roger Dove Danger, the actual one not the whichever ones I tried in my video, I can't remember. <laughs> so that answers your question, hopefully, and thanks for your question. The next one's from James Nash. Okay, he always asks very poignant questions. This was on my June questions and answers video. He said, what on earth would the notes be? Pavarotti, Cologne, very funny. Thanks for your great long answer. Re Oh, re-French perfume houses. New question, what have been the two or three greatest blunders mistakes, fails, missed opportunities in the world of fragrance in the last 25-ish years. Once again, James, you ask me a question that's going to have me sitting here with crickets happening while I think about it. I don't know, missed opportunities or fails. I, I really think that it's not really a blunder, but it's just something that I wish didn't happen. And it was when the IFRA rules came into play and the entire fragrance world had to change and reformulate all of their fragrances because lots of ingredients got banned. It is kind of a blunder or a mistake or a fail, I guess, is why can't the perfumers, these talented perfumers that have been in the industry for many, many years, multi-generational companies, why can't they still make the fragrances as strong and exciting as they were? Why has pretty much every perfume been taken a step down? That is a fail to me. I know there are rules in place, but you're supposed to be these magical, talented people. Yeah, you might have had to remove an ingredient, but I'm sure there can be ways to keep that spark alive and keep that richness and what the original one was, especially if you're proud of your work. Let's take Dior Dolce Vita, for example. I love it so much. And the new version is just a pale, watery comparison. You're talented perfumers. Why can't you do something to keep it much similar where across the board, everything just got way worse? That's the fail, in my opinion. Yeah, really, really bad. That whole thing about reformulation is just a sore subject for I think a lot of us perfume lovers in the world and it's so annoying. <laughs> I'm not going to rant about it because my opinions might be quite unpopular. We're just going to move on. The next question is from Cavalan, and this is on my Memoir Woman video by Amwaj. Greetings, would you pick Memoir Woman over Lyric Woman? Yes I would. Both are absolutely beautiful, I own both of them, but I like heavier things. Lyric Woman is one of the most stunning roses I've ever tried, but I like heavy, dark, brooding type fragrances, so I would always pick Memoir over it. Plus, I live in the UK where it's quite often cold, so um, I would reach for it more, most probably. But I have both and love both. The next question is from LaLuvia722. This was on my May questions and answers. Apologies if this is an inane question, but do you have standard locations and number of sprays for a fragrance, e.g. one per wrist and one per elbow or something. Yes, I do. I am, as shocking as it might be to a lot of people, I am an eight spray minimum person. It's totally normal for me to spray two sprays here, two sprays here, two sprays here, pass the bottle, two sprays here. That to me is wearing a fragrance. I speak to a lot of people in my job because I work with fragrance 
that always say, and I've said this before, they always say, fragrance doesn't last on me. I always ask them, how many sprays on average do you use? And just last week, a lady said to me, that she said to me, nothing lasts on me. I asked her how many sprays she used. She told me that she sprays one into the air and lets it fall onto her hair. So I said, so you don't even apply it to your skin? It doesn't even get warm on a pulse point? That might be the issue. I think you should probably wear a little bit more. Of course, I do put a bit of judgment into place. If I'm wearing Moth, for example, by Zoologist, which is such a powerhouse perfume or portrait of a lady, I'm not gonna wear eight sprays of it, but pretty much I'm eight sprays minimum. That's my go-to. That's when I know that I can feel what I'm wearing and I will be smelled by other people. And I am one of those people that likes people to smell my fragrance. So eight sprays minimum, two, four, six, eight. The next question is from Lavender Lavender, and this was on my summer cheapies video that I did most recent this summer. Um, hi, Tommy. What do you think about Passion by E.T.? Elizabeth Taylor. I did go to a Steven Spielberg moment in my head just then. <laughs> I have not tried it, Lavender Lavender. Lavender times two. Uh, I haven't tried it. I know which one it is though. It's that purple bottle with the that sort of deal going on. I haven't tried it, but I can imagine that I might like it because I know that it's monstrous and that works for me. Maybe I'll try it someday, we'll see. The next question is from Light of Joy and this was on my Givenchy Ange ou Dimon video that I did many years ago. Wow, we're talking six or seven at least. Hi Thomas, you may have answered this question before, but I wonder how your perceptions of fragrances change over the years. For instance, this review is almost seven years old. Oh, okay, there you go. Uh, and I'm curious how you'd feel about Ange ou Dimon today. There's no one answer to that. There are certain things that I will never stop loving and there are certain things that you just go off of. I will say that when I reviewed Ange Dimon, I wasn't not aware of. I hadn't delved into the niche world of perfumery yet. I was still very much trying lots of designer perfumes and it was a time when designer perfumes were better. Um, I think once your brain gets exposed to the niche world, it's like a million doors open and you don't know which one to go through. So looking back, I will never say that designer fragrances are on a lower level to niche, but niche is more experimental and Ange Demon I think is definitely one of the better designer fragrances, which is why I chose to review it. I still like it now. I still think it's a really good fragrance and my perception of fragrances definitely changes. My taste doesn't really change. I think you get more honed with what you like. You start to kind of hone your taste and build your collection around what you like. Then I kind of gone out the other side again where I try and fill gaps. I don't know, there's, no, there's not one answer for it, but taste definitely changes for sure, definitely. The next question is from Margie Louise, and this was on my L'Orchestre Parfums, the ones that are inspired by different pieces of music. Hi Thomas, question for your next video. What do you think it means when a perfume has notes typically used in the bass in the middle? I thought bass notes were always heavier and last the longest. When they show a note typically used as a bass in the mid, does that mean it's performing in a different way somehow? That is a really, really good question, Margie, and that is one of the questions that I asked my perfumery tutor when I did my two-year course on naturals. Um, let me try and explain. So I asked her that question when we had to do an experiment about solid floors on my course. So I said to her, we were talking about patchouli more specifically. I said to her, how can it be that patchouli is um, in the top, the base and the heart? How does that work? What does that mean? She said to me, what that means is either there is a much larger amount of the note in the perfume so you can smell it immediately so when you spray it on, it's patchouli, patchouli, patchouli. You smell it for the entire wear length. She said, or it's a number of different patchoulis put together to give it just a patchouli fest. So 
If a fragrance, for instance, has cedarwood in the heart, it just means that it's not, for me, it's not something that's going to get revealed five hours in. You will probably feel it in the background straight away. She told me top notes are the opening act, the heart notes are the main character of the perfume and the base notes are the background. That's one way to look at it. The other way is in time scale. You feel top notes, then you feel heart, then you feel base. Again, it's a complex subject, but that's my take on it. That's what my tutor told me. If you had a rose solid floor, you would put enough rose in it or enough types of roses where you would feel rose immediately all the way to dry down. So that's what I've been told. That's what I know. Maybe somebody in the comments that makes fragrance can also chime in. Thanks for your question. That is a great, great question. The next question is from NN and it's on my June smelly male video that I did. Do you have a secret painting in your study that ages for you? <laughs> okay, I get, what, I get what you're saying. I was thinking at first, I don't have a study. Like, what's going on? I don't, I barely have two rooms. <laughs> um, do you have a secret study? Where was that question? Uh, I watched a video from several years ago and years don't seem to take a toll on you. Eager to see your view on Amage. Well, thanks so much, NN. I really appreciate that. Considering someone recently said that I'm, I'm getting old and they said I look like grandpa old. I mean, so offensive, but I chose not to respond. Um, anyway, thanks. That's very cute. The next question is from Perambulation. You've asked questions before. This was on my incense perfume collection video. You mentioned Rien being unforgiving. Do you have other hard to use fragrances that you love and is it worth making a video about it? I don't know if I've done a video about my most kind of challenging perfumes before, but um, unforgiving for me is a positive thing. I don't know, that sounds strange, but it's true. One second, guys. Yes, unforgiving is good for me. I like strong perfume. I definitely have some things that I consider to be challenging. One of them is Lulu by Cacharel. I love it so much and I appreciate what it smells like and when it was made and how it made people feel and how it was so much a time. However, when I wear it, it I'm very aware of it. I'm very aware that I smell like an 80s woman with blue mascara and shoulder pads. But I don't mind, I like a challenge. Also, um, I have a fragrance called Viet Armis and it's by Beaufort London. That one is really, smoky it's very smoky lots of opium there's whiskey in it there's tea there's pepper it kind of smells like a uh, narcotic bonfire and i only really wear that in the dead of winter when it's really cold so i definitely have things that are challenging but i like a challenge and i like wacky perfume so yeah hope that answers your question the next question is from random things with shell what random things? What, what are those things? I would be interested to know. This was on my top five most complimented fragrances from many years ago. Will you review Dolly Parton's perfume sent from above? I would love to. I would love to smell Dolly Parton's perfume. I'm not sure where I can get it in the UK. I haven't really looked. However, I did recently open a mailbox. The address is in the description. If anyone wants to send me a sample, I'll give it a sniff. Yeah, how about that? The next question is from Sarah Herbs. And it's on my Ylang 49 by Lalabo review, which is my favorite Lalabo fragrance. I have discovered the oils are more cost effective than the Eau de Toilette in the Lalabo line. I love this perfume too. It's more refined version of Clinique Elixir, which I do enjoy. What do you think? Any resemblance? If you mean Aromatics Elixir, I would say they couldn't be further apart. They're both Sheepras for sure but Le Labo is really about, the Le Ylang 49 is really about patchouli quite a lot and Aromatics Elixir is moss. It's, they're very different types of Sheepras and I actually really don't like Aromatics Elixir. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't think they're the same, but they do have the same theme. They're both Sheepras. The next question is from We Are Sentient. How are you? It's on my June questions again. Have you tried Paris Ylang Ylang Nosy B? It's a great Ylang. And we, will we be getting a new perfume from you now that Fawn is off into the sunset? I have tried Paris Ylang Ylang Nosy B. To me, it 
doesn't smell like ylang ylang or it doesn't smell like the ylang that I'm looking for. It's too candy like, it's very sweet, it's very, there's a bit of fluffiness going on. Uh, uh, still, Chameleon by Zoologist is the closest I have found and I feel like I should just keep it at that because nothing's coming close to that one. But yes, I have tried it and I was really excited to try it, but it just wasn't the ylang that I, I needed in my life, so no. And will we be getting another fragrance from you? I hope so. I have to get myself to the south of France um, to do it. And travel is obviously a little bit dodgy at the moment and things are a little bit crazy still with travel. So yes, I definitely have ideas and yes, I definitely want to do at least two more fragrances. So watch this space. Animaniac, is there a PO box address we can send you to stuff to sniff? Yes, there is. It's in the description below. It's Ouch Romano's Smelly Box. No, it's not called that. It's just called Ouch Romano's Box 432. Address is in the description. Go and have a look. The next one's from Aqua Blush Girl, and this was on my incense perfume collection video. Hi, I was wondering if you'd be able to help me with Champaka fragrances. I used to wear Champaka by Space NK, and they discontinued it. I brought up as many bottles as I could and have sadly run out now. Do you know that scent and do you know anything similar to that scent? Any help greatly appreciated. Yes, I do know some Champaka fragrances and I love it. As a no, I think it's so interesting. If you don't know what Champaka smells like, tropical floral that to me is very rich, a little bit dark, has tea-like nuances, nuances, and is also kind of indolic a little bit, or it's without sounding crass and horrible it's got a touch of like a uranus feel but when you smell the real thing you know that it's a gorgeous flower so in my brain it doesn't make me feel queasy but it, it smells so beautiful and it's not used very often in perfumery because it's very expensive however suggestions um yes Yesterday I wore Tom Ford's Champaka Absolute. I was gifted it by a lovely subscriber of mine. Oh my gosh, still overwhelmed by that. And it has a, obviously a huge Champaka note in there. There's also a kind of sugared, nutty sort of smell. It's got a little touch of like a burnt sugar smell. It also smells quite a lot like Lily of the Valley, so it's got this clean powderiness as well. But the opening has got everything that I love about Champaka. It's got that verging on, oh, this is a bit strange smell, but really, really good at the same time. One of the best representations of Champaka I have ever smelled is a perfume called Mandarava, and it's by Prin Lomros. Uh, the line of fragrances is Prisana, and it's pricey but it's a very, very cool perfume. It is his interpretation of what heaven smells like, where his grandmother is resting. And uh, Prin is just a great perfumer. He's from Thailand, so look him up. It's called Mandarava, and it's got a ton of Champaka in there. That's two suggestions, but yeah, it's a tricky note to come by, I think. But yeah, go on Fragrantica also and um, check out Champaka perfumes, but those are the two that I really, really love. Thanks for your question. The next question is on my most treasured video, most treasured perfumes in my collection video, and it's from Aura Della Fay. Which version or versions of Samsara contained that Mysore sandalwood if one was looking to try it? So it's always going to be the earlier versions. Ignore Samsara in the taller red bottles, ignore the new one entirely. If you can find the ones in the clear bottles from the 90s, they're the ones that I have. They have real Mysore sandalwood and anything before that. I can't remember what the original Samsara looked like. Do you know, it could have been in a red bottle. To keep it simple, if you find the clear bottles, they have kind of diamond shaped edges with a gold band across them and a gold lid with, yeah, a gold lid as well. Those ones have the real Mysore sandalwood and you can really, really tell. Absolutely gorgeous. I treasure mine. I have the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. When I use them, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but um, yeah, look out for those. And anyone else in the comments, Samsara experienced people, please help out if you can. 
The next one is from EI, or is it L? Is, is your name L? I don't know. Um, it's on my June questions and answers video. It says, hey Thomas, here's my question. Some fragrance reviewers just drop off of drop off the surface of the earth. And these are people who were gaining a really good following. We know it's not because they died. Do you know some of the real life reasons for these situations? And have you personally felt the need to just call it quits yourself? <laughs> okay. In terms of people disappearing off the face of the earth, um, I, I mean, I personally know that there are at least four fragrance reviewers that have sadly passed away. One of them being Carlos from, he was called Brook, Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. He was the guy that I spoke to quite a lot out of the ones that have passed away. Um, there's also Dan from My Mickers. There was a guy called Chris. Um, I think he was called Mr. Siage. These people are still honored in the fragrance community and at events and things like that. So that is unfortunately a very sad reason why they stopped doing their reviews. But anyone else, I mean, the only one I can speak for is a guy called Freddie Albrighton, who was my favorite fragrance reviewer. And he went to pursue a different passion of his, which was tattoos. He was a very good tattoo artist. And he has now made his own fragrance line. So yeah, and Katie Parkrick as well. She is a personal friend of mine. I'm lucky enough that I actually know her in real life now. She took me out for dinner um, recently. <laughs> so she also, speaking for her, not for her, but from what, because I know her, she, her main thing in life is uh, broadcasting and TV and music and radio and that's her biggest career. So she pursued that but still has her love of fragrance. Believe me, I have asked her if she will be ever be coming back to do reviews and I think she just kind of lost her mojo a little bit, but she might do. And Katie, if you watch this, I love you, but I'm sure she's way too busy to be watching my videos. But anyway, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but sometimes maybe you just, maybe the pressure gets too much. Talking about myself, have I ever thought about quitting? No. Are there stressful times with doing YouTube? Yes, and the main stress of it is time. Doing this is something that I absolutely love. I'm gonna make no bones about that. So I hate to even have a, one tiny bit of a complaint about it because it's I choose to do this but it does take a lot of your time up I, I spend a lot of my free time doing this um, instead of other things and for me personally I put pressure on myself and I know I shouldn't because the minute you do that that's when it becomes not fun but there is a certain amount of pressure to put videos out and create content that I guess is exciting. That people, you might think, oh God, are people gonna like that? Um, but the minute I start thinking like that, I, st I stop, I try to stop thinking like that. And I just do videos when it feels right, when I feel like there's something exciting to talk about. But I've never thought of quitting. I love it. I love doing this. It's really fun. So I definitely have stressful moments though, for sure. Don't we all though, really, with everything? <laughs> so thanks for your question. The next question, it was on one of my discoveries and disappointment. It's from English Prof Style. Ah, oh, cool. Go and check her channel out, by the way. She says, she says, would you do a boozy fragrances video? Yes, I will. How about that? Yeah, I'll start gathering my thoughts about boozy fragrances that I've tried in the past. Uh, and as I always do, I will try to be varied. You often see, a lot more often you'll see dark booze in fragrance like rum or brandy or whiskey. I'll try and think of some fragrances that I've tried that contain other things too. Great suggestion and yes, I will do it. The next question is also from English Prof Style. Uh, January 2021, I'd love to hear about your time working for Disney. Where did you work and for how long? I worked for the Walt Disney Company for five and a half years. It was one of my favorite jobs ever. I worked in the stores. My main amount of time was at the flagship shop on Regent Street in London, which is now closed. I don't know why I went like that. I don't know where Regent Street is from here, <laughs> but I loved it. It was magical. It was a fun place to work, working with crazy Disney people that are just really Disney-fied. I really, really liked that. I did actually get offered the 
job on the cruise ship as well when they first launched the cruise ship and I didn't take it. The reason I didn't take it is because I really wanted to work in Walt Disney World in Florida and the people that were coming over from America, they come once a year to interview people for Walt Disney World. If I went onto the cruise ship, I would have missed the, the one time to do the interview for Walt Disney World. So I said no to that and then went to the Walt Disney World interview because I wanted to do that so much more. While they were kind of deciding who got the job and who didn't, I called them, you're gonna kill me. Well, you're not gonna kill me, but I, okay, I'm gonna talk about this. Before I found out if I got the job at Walt Disney World, I called them and said that I didn't want to do it. And it was all to do with a certain person in my life that I was in love with that, um, I, I don't know, I'm not going to go into it, but I chose a person over a dream and um, I will never do that again. <laughs> so, kind of personal, but yeah. Really wanted to work at Walt Disney World, but kind of, yeah, I, I didn't in the end. But I loved my time at Disney and I would still work at Walt Disney World now if they offered me the job. The second to last question is from Fiona Louise, and this was also on my June questions. Hi Thomas, what do you think of Elizabeth Arden fragrances in general? Would you say they are good quality? I tend to see them as cheaper alternatives to Estee Lauder. That is a good observation. I would definitely agree with you on that one, but also quite different in terms of their perfume restyle. Do you have any Arden perfumes in your collection? What do I think of them? I think Elizabeth Arden perfumes are a good way to experience a slightly throwback style of perfume for very affordable prices. In terms of quality, eh, I don't know, they're not the best, but I think there are some real gems in there, like Fifth Avenue. There was a lady that, at my work that used to wear that, Pauline, and she always smelled great. It smelled great on her, and it's a real cheapy one, so I don't currently own any. Uh, and I don't think I ever have actually. What do I think of them though? I think, yeah, like I said, I think they're a really good way to inject a bit of glamour into your perfume collection without breaking the bank. That's what I think. Thanks for your question. And the last question is from G Colors, and this was on my Sarah Jessica Parker stash review. I have this perfume. I have this perfume. <laughs> I thought I thought it was. I have this perfume. It's, I have this perfume. Uh, I love woody and slightly masculine leaning fragrances. Someone mentioned on Fragrantica that they smell dill pickles in this scent. Now I can't unsmell it. That's happened to me a lot of times before. Do you have any idea which note might cause this smell? It's definitely gonna be a wood of some kind. I remember this really beautiful perfume called Alpha by Mende Rosa that I really liked and I was considering maybe getting it and then a colleague of mine said it smelled like pizza, like the herbs on pizza and then it just smelled like pizza forever after that, you know, someone can really ruin a fragrance, it's like someone ruining a song <laughs> for you, it happens. But I think there are definitely certain rich woods that have that sort of pungent, almost astringent type smell that can be perceived as pickles for sure. There's, it could be a clash of notes as well. You know where something's just not quite harmonious and it ends up going sharp? I don't think it's any one note, but definitely <clears throat> because of the amount of rich woods that are in Stash, it's some kind of wood, something like rosewood or sometimes juniper as well for me can go a little bit pickly. To be totally honest, I'm not really sure what it is in that one. But um, yeah, I know what you're talking about though. I have smelled fragrances that smell pickily and it's not fun. Anyway guys, that is my questions and answers for July slash August consolidated into one. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm out to Romano trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.